And um, can we move on? Is Sarah Bogosian ready to ask her question of Mr. Whistler? I certainly am. Hello, everyone, and especially Mr. Whistler. Hello. I'm thrilled to be here with you. Um, I have this question for you, and then I have something I wanted to tell you that's somewhat related. But let me ask you the question first. Unlike Ruskin and Turner, your work in Venice captured a very different, more modern vision of the city. What was your inspiration in showing it as you did? Well, first of all, uh, let me congratulate you on coming to us from the Whistler House Museum of Art. It must be a splendid place. And I see, I believe, one of my paintings behind you there. Uh, I hope that is a reproduction. I, I'm not sure. Um, but thank you for recognizing the uniqueness of my Venice work, because, again, it, it is what I would call Whistlerian. And it was something that escaped many foolish critics at the time. I created two artistic innovations in Venice, one in etching and the other in pastels. But before that, though, came the general inspiration. Because as you know, by that time, it was around 1880, I had a reputation for finding beauty in the unconventional and ordinary, and that's what I did in Venice. And as I prowled the less frequented parts of the city, I discovered complete harmonies and arrangements in narrow neighborhood canals and bits of architecture tucked away in small squares and secluded lanes. I saw a reality that had escaped every artist before me, and this affected how I portrayed Venice. In my etchings, I used a new staccato style with dots and dashes rather than strong continuous lines. I also structured scenes as geometrical patterns. You know, I represented doors and windows, pillars and steps, archways and balconies as arrangements of squares and rectangles in order to emphasize the abstract over the concrete. And you probably know that as a theme throughout my work. And I did something similar with my pastels. Rather than drawing fully realized subjects and covering the entire paper with color, I gave mere impressions or, or outlines of what I saw. I also drew on plain brown wrapping paper, which gave the pictures a sort of a, a grainy, earthy feel, and the colors were mostly blue and orange. They, they yielded a lightness, a daintiness that matched the fairyland appearance of the city's polished marble and richly toned bricks and plaster. I, I hope that answers your question. It does, thank you. So I just wanna comment on Whistler's mother painting that is behind me. It's what I call an original copy done by his cousin, Edith Fairfax Davenport in 1906. He told her he could, that she could paint it as long as uh, he paint, she painted it exactly how she saw. And at the time it had darkened because of the mastic and, and cobalt varnish that he used on it. So that's why ours is darker. I can't tell if you can see it well because of the lighting right now today, but um, that's what that is behind us. And then I just wanted to let everyone know too, and to show you, I don't know if you could see this, but the Smithsonian put together a show called Sergeant Whistler and Venetian Glass. I went to see this exhibition at the Mystic Seaport Museum in Massachusetts, in Connecticut, a couple of weeks ago, and it had beautiful, beautiful uh, etchings and paintings done by you and Sargent, um, and they brought in Venetian glass that that uh, depicted the beautiful Murano glass at the time when you were there. So uh, I just wanted to let you know about that. I love the glass. I do have to wonder why drag in Sargent, but 